Hi there, this is Dr. Pan recording from Tucson, Arizona. Hope life is treating you well. Thank you for watching this clip on how to find conic equations for dummies. This is part one of four. In the first part, we're dealing with overview, a flying checklist. Before you get on the airplane being a pilot, they have a quick checklist to tell you quickly which steps you must take before you can take off. Well, in my book here, I have an Algebra 2 3rd edition, and on the back of the book, conveniently, they did a list of all the conic curves, circles, the parabolas, ellipse, and hyperbolas. However, for average uh, test, this is way too much stuff to write on a note card. So this video, what I'm hoping to do is give you a short overview, a quick checklist, a fly checklist, so you can pack it in your head and um, give yourself a bearing on it. I'm going to use some funny names in that. That's called a circle or ellipse going this way or this way. We're going to call this one the smart one. The smart way in that they all have the curve together, literally. Okay, now this type is in the form of, depending on A is big or Y is big, or B is big, the X term is bigger or the Y term is bigger, you have the ellipse elongated differently. Now, if A square equal to B square, then on this side we have a circle. It's not lopsided. Nonetheless, this plus sign becomes the smart one. It keeps the curve together. Okay, so when you see an ellipse or circle, think together. Together means adding sign. Okay, then there are two more one, two more conics. That's a very common. And I'm gonna call this one looks like half wit. Okay, so we're gonna stay on with the uh, sibling analogy. So you have the smart one, you have the half of it. Half of it is literally the one curve that's half. Okay, so the important thing you need to know about this half width one is this. The curve rests on linear for P term. I'll explain what it means by that. So now if you remember this one, it's a half width and a curve, remember, it's rested on the linear 4P term. So for example, take this first graph. Okay, the curve is on Y, so you put a linear term here, and you put a 4P in front of it, and what's left is X squared. There's only one linear term and one square term, unlike our smart ones, which is X squared and a Y squared with a plus sign. Okay, so this is how we distinguish it. Now on this curve, Let's try to also linear rest on nah, the other way around. Curve rest on linear 4p term. So the curve is resting on x. Let's put a 4p in front of it and then y squared. Okay. Y squared is equal to 4px. That's for the curve look like this. Or the other way, depending on p is bigger or equal to bigger or uh, if p is bigger than zero or less than zero. There. A slow day here today. Tom is tied. All right. Remembering curve rest on linear 4p term is enough to get you started on the half width. Okay. Now, before I go on to the third one, I want to share something with you. I went to the post office today in mailbox and I got my uh, postcards back. I ordered a whole bunch of postcards for my students. It has a cute duck. Now, the story goes that when my daughter was young, she thought I was a math duck. My students was calling me math duck. But for a little kid, she didn't know the difference between DOC, a PhD, ha ha, glorious one, or a duck. She thought a duck was making more sense. Anyway, so I want to show you this cute picture she picked out for me. All right, okay, back to math. The last one is the hyperbola. This is the curve I call the rebel because it's broken into two curves. It looks like it gone to the war and it broke into pieces. For this one, 
x squared, a squared, there's a minus sign. Okay, minus, think of minus sign equal to a war, broken up, uh, equal to 1. All right, now, which curve is which, because there's a horizontal and a vertical curves, whichever one is positive, positive term has the curve. So, for example, the x term is positive here and y term is negative, so the curve is on the x-axis, which means the curve goes to this one. All right, that should be easy enough for us to remember. So the positive term has the curve on it. And then this one has a y curve, so let's write it down here. So it's y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared equal to one. I think the most important thing that you got to know which term is positive for the rebels. They're rebellious. So there you have it. In the family, you have the smart one, the half wit, and the rebel. All right. I hope that this is clear. Once again, from Tucson, Arizona, this is Dr. Pam making learning math fun, at least trying to. If the video has been helpful, I would appreciate a comment or a thumb up. Until next time, have a confident day.